And the reason why we've been here for so long is because of the desert. It was our protector and it also gave us everything. The creator gave us everything that we needed to thrive. So our people have been here for thousands of years and um, our bands that we have were mostly known for what we eat. Like you guys came through Pyramid Lake and they're the Agai Tikara, which is, or excuse me, they're the Kuyui Tikara and they're the Kuyui eaters which there's like an ancient fish that was actually on the um, uh, the endangered species list at one point and the tribe got together and was able to bring their fish back and that's amazing they did do some amazing work there but our people have been here within the great basin for a very very long time and as non-natives started coming through this territory captain truckee was pretty pivotal for our people because he was in the Winnemucca area, and between Winnemucca and Lovelock, and he heard of his his um, brothers coming through. They were non-native, and he followed them for days. And uh, this is John C. Fremont, Captain Truck, or excuse me, Kit Carson. They were traveling through. They ended up he ended up meeting them um, pretty close to Pyramid Lake when he arrived here, and he befriended them. And because he was a friend of the non-natives, he called him his brothers. He was waiting for them, he said. And in return, Kit Carson and John C. Fremont knew that there were gonna be more people because they were kind of paving the way through the desert to get to California. And they were trying to find the easiest route. Well, here in the Great Basin, this is an area of internal drainage and that basically means that our water does not go to the ocean. It starts here and ends here. So we have to be very conscientious as to how the health of our water is because it's important. That's what gives all of us life here. And he knew that there were gonna be more people coming through this area. And Captain Truckee was a friend to the non-natives. So he gave him this little piece of paper and our grandfather called it called it the talking rag and this paper he could present to any person who's non-native and they would help him and he would help them and so he thought that was pretty fascinating prior to that we would actually work with little string system we would have certain knots on the string as you go to one location to the other location and it tells something especially if you're if you're not familiar with the territory, because if you come in this territory with ill will, you might not leave this territory. But if you come here as, as a passing through, or if you're a trade, uh, coming in for a trade, because we like to trade too. Our native people, especially our women, we like to adorn ourselves. So there was a lot of trade for our furs, basketry, weaponry. I've seen some of our weapons all the way down in you know, the, uh, the Bay Area. And we like shells. We like our abalone, we like olivella shells. So we like to adorn ourselves just as much as we do today. <laughs> and so um, there was a trade here, but as the non-natives started coming through here, our world started to change, started to change forever. And this was a shared territory and it was taken away. And um, I'm just probably going to leave it at that point for right here because I want to introduce you guys to um, Dean Barlis. He is an amazing man. He is my personal, you know, and many others, a spiritual advisor, spiritual leader, shaman, whatever you want to call him. But he's helped me with a lot, and I hold him dear to my hold him dear to my heart because he's that special. To me. And. And if you have an opportunity throughout the week or throughout today, take a chance, talk to him. And honestly, if you, when you're on your way out, Dean lives right where you guys are going to drive right by his house. Stop in and say hi. You know, he's, he's, um, he's building something and he's, it's going to be a really good movement. And it's just so awesome. You know, he has a vision and he wants to share it with people, people, uh, his family, you guys are his family. And, you know, to see that movement happen is just really, really incredible because, you know, sometimes when we're out there living life, it gets so hectic and you just need that little, 
that little piece of um, sanity. And Dean is a little piece of my sanity. He's seen me go crazy. Eh? <laughs> and he was my savior in some sense. But anyways, he's, he's a really good person. So here's Dean. Good morning. I think it's still morning anyway. My name is Dean Barley. I come from Pyramid Lake, Nixon. So if you come north on 447, you probably went by the house. Anyway, I want to say a few words. And the first thing I want to say is I'm here to change the world. We are going to change this world. We're going to change this country. And being here as a people, we've been here forever. I've been here and people like me have been here forever. We were part of creation. We are, in our language, those who feast with the mountain lion. That was the terminology our old people used for two-spirited or somebody who was gay or homosexual. And that's a part of our traditions, culture. We've always been here, existed. We were created with man and woman thousands and thousands of years ago at the first beginning. And once this country falls apart, we'll still believe, we'll still be here. That's my belief. I was told a long time ago, I was gonna witness the world changing. This world will change in our prophecies into that better world that's coming. And as a, as a native person, we're gonna have to live with the big holes that they dug in the earth, our mother earth. We're gonna have to live with the contamination they left, but we'll still be here thousands of years from now but it may be a new world when that time comes. So I just want to share the things we've done. Right now we are battling with the Nevada Lithium, Lithium America up north. We went there last year and we stopped construction. We sat there these big old ex excavators was trying to run over us, but we stopped them. Lithium. You know, they say that's the new green energy. It's not. You still have to use the electricity to power the batteries. And we see that happening so many times here in our country. We have to stand up. We got sued. We're being sued by America Lithium America. We got a big stack of paper like this at home. But we have to stand up and do what's right. I know I have to stand up and do what's right. But um, so we continue on. We still stand up and fight for what we what we believe is right. And I know it's right in my heart. I know it's right. We can get by a lot better. We can do a whole lot better without all the greed for this land, the greed for the water. Here in Nevada, we are in the driest state in the union. So when lithium comes in, they're gonna contaminate the water so many thousands of gallons of water. But, you know, we're getting a lot, pretty, pretty radical here. Anyway, I just want to share our traditions, culture. If you want to talk, we'll talk. Um, we started coming to Burning Man in 2001. That was the first time we came here. It was a new experience. There were years when we missed 
but other times. When we first came out, everybody was intense. We, I was, we were young enough that we could sleep on the playa in the sleeping bags and be comfortable. Now that I got old, it's different. But um, we still come to meet. Over the years, we've made so many friends, family. Nowadays, they're like family. Um, years ago, we went to the hardship. Three years ago was tough, toughest time in my life. I lost part of my foot. And we were battling with Nevada, Medicaid, and kept being denied. So one of the persons from here in Burning Man, Dave King, he built this for me. And we've been learning to walk again. And he's camped up over here, other side of, uh, close by anyway. And he's been coming out and helping me doing this physical therapy. He built, the, like I said, the prosthetic for me to wear. I've been slowly learning to walk again, which is something <laughs> challenging in my life, which is good. And, and it took somebody from Burning Man to help me come and help build this for me. And when my foot leg changes, he'll build another one. So I give thanks for Dave King for coming out and doing this for me. Took a burner to help another burner. So that's a good thing. Pro way before Burning Man even came out here, we used to come out with my elders, my dad, a couple of uncles, and we do prayers out here on the playa. We came out onto the playa because within, you can look around the mountains around here. You can see the sacred places our people had. We talked about the trails that came out of the Winnemucca, city of Winnemucca, coming this way and going into California. There's a place in the mountains, Buffalo Hills, west of us, we call Koi Pato, uh, Bighorn Sheep's Hole. It's uh, like a volcanic tunnel, and you can go to there. Our old people said that goes into another world down below. I've never gone to see there, gone to see that. One day we'll go and look at it. My dad always wanted to go there and see that place. I lost him maybe three years ago, four years ago now. He taught me a lot of things that I know that I carry. My grandma, Ihutsi, we call our grandma on my dad's side. Ikunu, my grandfather on my dad's side. They raised me. I learned the language. I'm not fluent in the language, but I could understand it now. And uh, they also taught me because growing up, they saw I was different. So they started teaching me that two-spirit knowledge that our old people carry. For a long time, they had to hide. We had to take all of this underground and they shared it because the Christians came in and really disrupted our people, almost destroyed our language, culture, traditions, our belief system. We didn't get all that back until an act of Congress in 1978. They gave us our religious freedom again, but way before we would come out here and do our ceremonies, our prayers in the sacred places around us, in the mountains here, this big mountain, north of Gerlach, Ishikai we call it. There are sacred places way up on top that we, our people use. We didn't use it every year. We'd come once, maybe five years or so. We're always button heads with BLM, Bureau of Land Management. They think they have 
possession of this land. We're always, always at odds with the government, federal government. They think the same thing. But I'll tell you what the real truth is. We are still caretakers of this land. We will always be caretakers of this land until Creator tells us we're no longer caretakers. Then I guess I'll become an American citizen. <laughs> anyway, right now I'm a Numa. We call ourselves the people. Numa. Our Paiute name for ourselves. We are the people. We are the original people of this land. I met some Mexica people Saturday. Mexica are native people from the Valley of Mexico. And our people at one time sent people on migrations all the way into Central South America, Nicaragua, way down. They all speak a variation of our language, our Shoshonean language, our Numic Aztecan language, as the scientists like to call it. And they are our people. They speak our language, speak the same language. We can catch a few words. The language has changed so much over the years. Some of the words they use, Donatio, I hear, or they call themselves Naimu, Nai, Numa, Na, anyway. They speak a variation of our language. So we have relatives that go all the way into Mexico, all the way into central Mexico. There's no borderline separating us. So when we meet each other, that's our people, our relatives. Distant relatives, but still our relatives, close relatives. So we understand and we can feel in our heart how close we are to these people. And one day, we're all going to be like that. We're all going to be part of that rainbow coalition, coalition of rainbow people, all the colors of this world, because we're going to have to change this world in, or, in order for our mother earth to survive. And in order for humans to survive, we can't continue destroying it, destroying her the way we are. So like I said, my little voice here is going to change this world one day. And I will witness that. I'm going to witness that when that time comes. So always remember the one thing I was told, water is sacred. We always know, have known the sacred, sacredness of water. Without water, there is no life. Without water, there is no green, there is no trees, grass. There is no life. And our people knew this a long time ago. So we give thanks anytime we see water. We'll wet our heads, wash our face, and give thanks for that water. So we have to get back to that teaching. And with my teachings, that's what I want to see is when they will all have that same feeling for our Mother Earth. So, I know there's a lot of things going on in this world that we, you don't hear about. Our people understand what it's like to live in a world where they try to wipe us off the face of this earth. We, we know genocide as Paiute people, Bannock people, Shoshone people, people of the Great Basin. We know genocide. Right now, my heart aches for the people in Palestine. 
they live through that genocide and here it's 2024 but they're having to survive through that genocide and that continues on in this world I want to change that we want to change that all of us together we can change that we can bring that change to our mother earth think about that we can all bring that change we can get by and not hate people we can get by and not hate two-spirited people because you cut me i'm still bleed red i'll still bleed red i may be brown brown is not a bad color it's a good color <laughs> and to get the tan I see people go into the machines and want to be all tan and brown. I can't change the way um, I was created. So, so I just want to bring that message here. Then at least listen. <laughs> I see Dave City. <laughs> Dave King, the guy who helped me to build my prosthetic. He has one himself, so if you want to go and shake hands, give him thanks for me on my behalf. <laughs> and if you want to see me later, you know, we'll be around. We do another talk at uh, Burners Without Borders at one. So yeah. I got a big old collection of rave and trance music at home. That's the music I enjoy. You know, I like that music. Maybe the beat, you know, but it's really makes me feel good. So prayers were said for everybody to have a good time. We used to come here and get away from the, my spiritual things. I'd come down, come out here to Burning Man, let my hair down and go wild. <laughs> Way back when, when they still had the Jiffy Lube out here. <laughs> and things like that. We had... I got to meet a lot of really close gay friends now. A lot of people from San Francisco. Later we got to know the guys from Comfort and Joy. They always treated us really good. But um, it's good to get away from that outside world because that outside world it will stress you out, make you go crazy. The political things, I don't even bother with that no more. Because it's crazy. The way they think, the way the government thinks, does. Like I said, I'm going to witness that new world coming. We're all going to witness that new world coming. And we're going to start here, bring it about. So I just wanted to share all those with you. You feel like you need to talk, come on up and we can visit or you see me out somewhere. We're gonna go to the temple and check it out. Cruise around and see the art. Some of the most amazing art is out here at Burning Man. So we get to see a lot of things. I've, you, we probably won't ever see up the reservation unless we travel, but uh, with that, I just want to end this little talk. I want to give thanks for all of you for being here and listening. So, Donna, you have anything to say? Yeah, I'll go ahead and finish up. Thank you, Dean. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, you, if you sit down with him and you strike up a conversation with him, this man is a plethora of, of, of stories and just sharing. He too is an artist. He's very talented. He's a beater. He sings songs. He, he holds sweat. He's very, very multifaceted, multi-talented, and is a two-spirit man. You know, he does bring a lot of. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, jeez. Um, as a two-spirit man, he's he's able to share. You know, all those sites, all of those things. He has. Um, both both parts of the emotion in him and he's able to understand both parts and share those 
and so I think two spirit people are very special and they've never really been they've never been shunned in our culture they have not been um, they've been accepted they too have a place in our society in our world in our lives as with everybody else and so but anyways he's very very um, kind individual but um, myself <laughs> um, I was my first year here to Burning Man was last year and uh, I remember it in our community which is Fallon it's about 115 miles away from where we stand and um, I never really had an interest to come out here I knew that there was some fabulous art out here there's some amazing people I've met that's traveled through our community I've seen the Burning Man uh, come into our community and talk about commerce and and you know people you know our community thrived th during this time as well the city of Fallon Churchill County state of Nevada and so it's nothing to scoff over as to the impact that you have made in our community you know even though we're not here you do make an impact in our community and um, even some of the artwork that's left throughout the year, the relationships that are created. When I was invited, it was by Dean and Cherub, and um, we went out to the Fly Ranch and we were doing uh, harvesting. We were harvesting our traditional food, which is the cattail, and it's a beautiful place there. And um, just talking with the individuals here and understanding what Burning Man is really about, because I really didn't have any preconceived notion. I called it Burnout Man because people are burnt out and they come here to recharge, I guess, you know, each to their own. And, um, but when I got here last year, I came here with my daughter. And It changed me. The beauty that I see, the connections that um, I see being created because so often we are like the silent citizens in in our own home, our own, our own territory and seeing Dean up here giving his presentation, being invited to um, give talks and having individuals like yourself sit here and listen and wanting to know more. Uh, it's beautiful because we don't always, we're not always heard and we're definitely not always seen. And to be um, brought to a platform that, um, like Dean was saying, he has a message and it's an important message and I can feel it. I could feel the shift happening. And what he says, I think is a prophecy of sorts. And we need to start listening. We need to start taking care of collectively, not only within ourselves, within our homes, within our communities, but also as a people. Like Dean said, the rainbow people, that's us, all of us, every one of us. And um, coming here, it kind of changed because you see every walk of life here. Last year, it was just, it was just, I call her my spirit animal because she was just the most beautiful woman that we camped next to. Her and her husband, they were in their mid 90s. They were burners, man. They had the stickers up their little, <laughs> their camper trailer. And they had like a whole bunch of stickers on there. I was like, wow, you guys have been here for a long time. But they just showed the spirit of who they were. You know, they you know, let us cruise around with me and my daughter, cruise around on the playa and just, just showed us, you know, how you can just be a kind individual. You know, she took us to a place that, um, what was it, chocolate martinis? <laughs> it was the first time I had a chocolate martini, it was just cool. And then they took us to a place where you can fight around in a cage and <laughs> they were just the cutest people like I said she was just my spirit animal but she too is getting older but she's she didn't make it this year her and her husband so um, but the impact that 
uh, it's not, it's like the Burning Man spirit that I took with me because afterwards I was talking with my daughter and she was really touched. She wanted to come back and, you know, be involved with um, the after, you know, like what is it going to be like to, um, to work and to help and help plan type of things where she was kind of coming from. So I held it really dear to my heart because I lost my daughter this past year. And because we were part of the camp that is, um, um, geez, the um, temple guardians. And they showed the sincerity of the temple. We went over there and Dean blessed it and because we were able to come out here too when the first spike was driven and when it's taken away and to see the connection to the spirituality of this community and also with um, what we take with us. It's, it's very endearing and very impactful. And, you know, with our, our native people here, I was really surprised that even this community has a place to um, memorialize their loved ones. You can sit and watch the emotions happen in the temple and uh, the connection that you have, and then you can just let go. You can release it. And you know, in our traditional way of, of living is that we have a thing called ghost sickness, and I have it. I have ghost sickness. And Dean's been helping me with that. But, because I don't have an answer as to how my daughter passed, is why. And, but, you know, it, it does give the opportunity to release that, you know, somewhat, because i seen the offering she made there, and I'm um, gonna be looking forward to watching it burn, you know, so that I too can just let it go because it's not good. It's not good to hold on to those things. I know that. And Dean's been telling me that. I just need to leave it alone. But um, the impact that Burning Man has had um, within our community, you know, we've had some very uh, generous people. They brought books to our library. They've helped Dean, you know, get a prosthetic leg, mobility, you know that's that's a lot and you know in i don't know if you guys have questions with regards to our paiute culture um this is our home territory uh oftentimes we are known for what we eat and that's how you you, you can tell where we are the toy to cut of the cattail eaters we like to eat the roots of the cattail and I live, I come from more of a marshy territory. It's like a, a, like a swampy, marshy area. And uh, that was our home for thousands of years, you know. And uh, when we travel, we would take days, but we would get there. We traveled at nighttime to get to a, one community to the next. I'm sure you guys know why, right? <laughs> <laughs> Follow the stars. We too had, you know, we call it the sagebrush highway where you have your trails and and you need to know how to read the stars you know and and everything about you because um there's nothing like wanting to come to pyramid lake and you end up in love lock <laughs> <laughs> you know the opposite direction but you you know our children they are raised to know everything we didn't we did not have um when rearing a child they need to know everything because we give our children a voice when they're just children uh they need to know how to there was no segregated responsibilities like you didn't teach one child to make baskets and just one child to go hunt they need to know all of it they need to know everything about it and the same thing with their bodies this body is given to you and this body is yours if it's violated we gave them a voice to speak with as well that that child and we have we have old stories, Dean can tell you some of them, of coyote 
And these are stories which teach our children how to um, protect themselves. They're, they know not to be touched if they don't want to be touched in a certain way. They know how to use their voice. Those people who do those bad things, they're dealt with. They either ostracize or, you know, they too don't leave. And so, you know, that knowledge that we rear our children with from such a young age all the way up to an adult, if they're separated or get separated, because we too have battles with other neighboring tribes. This is one of those territories that um, there has been conflict as in with our territory as well, where um, people are taken, you know, stolen, and then we go get them back because the men put the women on a very high pedestal, the women and children on a very high pedestal. There's nothing they would not do to protect, to protect them. And so, you know, being gifted with the knowledge from a very young child with everything you need in order to survive and thrive if you're separated. Now that's pretty amazing. Today we covet our children, don't let them venture out my son's there and <laughs> he knows about that one it's hard to let go it's really i brought my son this year and um yeah my son ryan there he is he shot <laughs> and so he's um he's experiencing this he's 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 growing up into a young man but uh I do appreciate you guys and it, it is very impactful to our uh, native communities you know that we do have a voice somewhere and because uh, welcome to our homelands because this is where this is what we're about we live this 24 7 you know we don't have any plans on going anywhere like Dean said we do appreciate people um, really taking care of the land here you know there's always going to be naysayers out there that's the world we live in and there's always people who are going to give, you know, some very kind and high praises too, because that's the world we live in. So you take the good with the bad and, you know, giving every people an opportunity to have a voice is, is very important, very important. And, you know, having the opportunity to sit here with Dean, I'm so grateful. And I hope it continues that, you know, there's a voice out here where we can share share who we are because I'm sure some of you guys are really curious about us and and I know I'm curious about all a lot of other people too and so if you guys have any questions for us or Dean do you have more to say too um I just wanted to say talking about coyote he was a trickster in our way his brother was a wolf he shot coyote was Itza and just sitting here smiling to myself. I remembered one of the coyote stories. <clears throat> Long time ago, coyote and his female wife were out and she, she had to have sex in our coyote way. There's no dirtiness in sex. So anyway, coyote got hard and wanted to have sex with his female partner. So they did for a while. Then he, Coyote was thinking, well, if I back up a little and run and push it in, it'd feel better. And he did. So Coyote ran even further back. <laughs> and he ran as fast as he could. And he poked it in again. In our language, we say, poked it in her sue. That's a female part. Anyway, he said, that really felt good. I'm going to run even further back and run. Run up really fast and poke it in. So he did. He was running really fast, ready to poke it in. And he tripped on a little rock. And he broke it. And that's why humans, males, have small ones. Otherwise, if he wasn't that way, we'd have, we'd have to drag the big ones in the dirt, in the dust. But anyway, that's a coyote story. One of the coyote, many, one of the many, many coyote stories. So, and the other thing, 
when we used to come, they had the most amazing tasting coffee mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. in center camp. Mm -hmm. But um, the other thing, what Donna was talking about, the sad thing as Indi indigenous people, we still have to deal with our women and our men that go missing. Young men, young people, older people. They're, they go missing or they were shot or killed. And it seems like nothing's ever done. So we still have to deal and live with that sadness. And it still affects us. So we do sweat lodge, it helps Donna. The prayers help Donna and all our other people. We are losing so many young people. They go missing and we'd never find them again. That is our reality. So with that, I wanted to share that much with you. It's going to be a good day for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much for the, from the both for to the both of you. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate your time. We do have about 15 minutes left, and I want to make sure people get questions in. Uh, that's the point of this. So um, if you can do me a favor, if you have a question, raise your hand. I'm going to come over to you. Please speak clearly into the microphone and have a concise question. We want to get people in on this. We got about 15 minutes, and let's get some engagement. Yes. Hi, I just. I've, I've worked um, a little bit with missing people or in or people who've been sex trafficked. I'm wondering, what do you mean that so many of your youngsters have gone missing? Like, yeah, what do you mean they've gone missing? It's just the world we live in. The, craziness is part of that chaos that we live in now. Many times our people are just taken, whether they're killed or whatever, way out somewhere, they just go missing. And as Native people, we deal so much with meth, with the drugs, everything like that. It takes the minds of our young people away. I see that. They're not who they used to be. All the different drugs. And our main adversary will always be our first adversary as native people, the alcohol. We have so many people that are alcoholics nowadays. So we continue the prayers that they be safe, that they come home. Many times our young people, they can come home, but they're not the same. Their minds are not the same. That's a great sadness that we live with, deal with every day all, for many years. I grew up with alcohol, watching our people suffer from the alcohol. Now, later in later years, we watch our people deal with the drugs. Many of them are lost. We can, the prayers and our belief, once in a great while, we succeed, I succeed, I'm able to bring them back to their right mind. But that, you know, once in a great while. 
and it takes a long time, years, to talk, talk them through this to get that out of their system. But I've dealt with that. So we continue the prayers for what we're dealing with today, for everything we deal with today. Okay. Just really quick too is um, what Dean was talking about earlier with the lithium mines. There is going to be large man camps in this mine as well, and our community has already experienced this. Not just our native community, because um, oftentimes it's like welcome to our world, because it doesn't just happen to natives anymore either. There was a young woman who was um, abducted and, and murdered in Fernley and this individual came from one of these uh, mines and he moved here worked at the mines ended up dumping her body out in the desert and she was later found and he was too I think he 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 unalived himself but um, these are very real uh, in Indian country it seems like if something happens on our reservation we have to deal with the FBI and I'm dealing with the FD, FBI. My daughter passed away in um, uh, the end of March and I still have no answers. Uh, they don't, we don't know what happened. So we get to sit in torment while um, other people would have been immediately taken to jail. But because it's, uh, we're an Indian, we get, we have, we have to deal with more laws than uh, everybody else. We literally have to deal with more tribal laws, federal law, state law, county law, you know, all of it. Um, and this is one part I don't have answers to my daughter's death because of the FBI. So um, sometimes they, go, they just sit on a shelf and just get, you know, there is no answers. Uh, the FBI always says, oh, they're, they have a lot on their plate. Well, what more do you need once you have a loss of life? And um, it takes a lot. You know, I'm about ready to kick some ass here pretty soon because it's taken too damn long. You know, I'm, it's not okay that our Native people have to be treated in such a manner. You know, I was even told that, that um, you have to wait. Why the hell do we have to wait? Because she was Native? And that's not okay, but good question. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to go to the other side of the stage. Anybody in this section here? Yes, we'll go over here. Okinoksukwa. Nisti de tana ko apo isko maapi eksukwa uta. Nitutu siksika iksukabi. Hello, all my relations. Um, uh, other uh, Donna and uh, Dean. Uh, this isn't a question, it's just an expression of gratitude. I just want to thank you so much for your words today. Uh, very meaningful and so sorry for your loss. As we know, I come from uh, Blackfoot country up north. Uh, my husband and I have been coming here since 1999 and uh, have seen the growing of this city and, uh, and have always been so amazingly touched. But every time we come, we pass through your lands and through Nixon and always express our gratitude to the Paiute people. And I want to say that again. Thank you so much for allowing us to be here, allowing us and embracing us in such a beautiful way. And I just want to thank you for that. And uh, we also are beekeepers as well. And so we always bring a little bit of uh, what we call Siksika Namoistan, which translated is to Blackfoot Bee Shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to gift uh, Elder you. some of the honey. Uh, you. Ah, thank you. Nota. Nota. You know, we do have um, kind of a tie with the Blackfeet people. We are the only people in the country who gets to fight for their dead. It took us, took my tribe over 20 years to bring home what, you know, the United States called the ancient one. And, and same with the Ansic. Well, in Blackfeet territory, they have an Ansic boy, and he was to be, what, 14 or 16,000 years old. Yeah, and you know, there's people out there stating that they want to displace us from our own history. Same thing here in the Great Basin. Um, we had to fight and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to bring our dead home uh, in my uh, in in Fallon or Stillwater. 
uh, we had the Spirit Cave remains, and it took 20 years just to battle with the federal government because they said they wanted to keep him because he uh, has the oldest known mummified remains with the oldest textiles in North America. We said, and? <laughs> we kind of know that. We've been here for a long time. Our stories are that old, and we have intimate detail about the mountains and the springs and the waters. We were here when the water was here. You look out in the playa, you'll see this shelf line across the across our mountains. There was the ancient Lake Lahontan here, and that was about 12,000 years ago it started to dry up. We have stories going back that far, talking about um, after the drying up of the water and where we were, we were in the mountains during that time. Hello. <laughs> so we have stories from around here and you guys, you know, we did work. Sadly, we had to work with a company or a man who had geogenetics and uh, in Denmark because we were too afraid to even commit to any type of governmental institution to do DNA testing on our people because we did not trust them. And good thing because it came down to it, I know I don't trust them now because of things that happened, but it took a long time, a lot of resources that our tribe didn't have just to bring our people home. And we've still, and Dean is a part of that as well. He um, helps us uh, bring our people home and he's been there. He's been a very big part of that because they too in Pyramid Lake had the same thing. Um, uh, with their, our ancient remains, so thank you, our brother. All right, well, we've just about hit our time, but uh, I do have one more question. We got about three to four minutes here, so in three to four minutes, if you can answer this question for me, we're out here at this event, at this experiment um, for days, weeks, months, uh, and we help uh, and, and we are caretakers of this land in this particular parcel for that period that we are here. In your opinion, how are we doing in that position and how can we improve? So I'm gonna let Dean finish up, so I'm gonna get my little talk out of the way. So when we would go to different places, we had campsites out in the desert and you could see them littered around. You know, we had big old grinding bowls, uh, big ones, so big that they thought there was big redheaded giants who were white that lived here. Hey. <laughs> Didn't happen. Sorry, but they were little squatty Paiutes like us. But anyways, um, we had campsites that were left around, you know, and we'd come back every year to those campsites every year to those campsites. And I don't know if you guys want to call it litter, people call it artifacts today, but you guys are pretty impressive, or we're pretty impressive because, you know, cleaning up the playa and making it as if you erased it, you know, you guys are, this community is important. There needs to be some kind of a trace, you know, but um, you guys have played by the rules and you've done your job and I believe you know, if more people are able to get out into this community and, and see what it's about. And you come here and you can find it, you're, what you're looking for. You know, I call it the cats and boot music, cats and boots and boots and cats and cats and boots. You can find that or you can find other things. You know, I'm interested in the people in the story. And I think you guys are spot on because I think this community gets it. You get it, you know, you get it. And um, you bring it home for me. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you for the invite as well. I really appreciate you guys. I think you guys are doing a great job. Um, your organization is learning. They're starting to learn more and more, listening to us, listening to me, which is good. So, you know, it's good. Everything's, you know, taken care of in a good way. Now, with us here, it's really being taken care of in a good way. So I just want to say that much. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Donna Cassette and Barlis. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We really appreciate your time. Every year that you're here, you make an impact. This is important for us to hear and for us to be here with you. So thank you so much for that. Uh, can't wait to see you next time.